We thank you guys for watching, whoever's joining us today. I know that we're not together right now, but we're in the same spirit, and we just love you guys. We miss you all. When we open up again, it's going to be good. It's always good. This season is different, but it's still God's word, and it, it sharpens us, guys. So let's go ahead and jump on in uh, this evening. We're going to be reading in the book of Daniel this evening, and it's going to be verses 1 through 18. God's word reads like this. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 90 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent the messages to the high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, and magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. So all these officials came and stood before Stood before the statue the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up, then heralds shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, scyther, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship the king Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshiped to the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed the, of, on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, long live the king. You've issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, flutes, cither, lyre, or harp, or pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing fire. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put into charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they, when they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is this true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made. You hear the sound of the musical instruments, but if you refuse, you'll be, you'll be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace, and then God will be able to what God will be able to rescue you from my power. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown in the blazing fire of furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from the power of your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Man, there's so much in this story, and it's awesome. I've been reading the book of Daniel, and... And the beginning is good. If I, I, I recommend that you read it, guys. Um, it's good. Um, in, in this story, it goes on to say that they do get thrown in the furnace and then God delivers them. But that's not where I'm going to focus on today. I'm going to focus on, on this chapter, of course, on 3, 1 through 18. These three young men, guys, they had faith, faith like, like no other. I mean, this faith, they had so much faith that they were even willing to risk their own lives to do it. Everybody else was doing it, and these guys just said, you know what, throw us in. We're going to stand our ground. We know what God we serve, right? So they stood there. No matter what, just because everybody else was doing it, they didn't do it. I mean, there's a lot of things in this world that just because others do it, we seem to do it. I mean, sometimes it's normal to us, but these guys, they stood their ground. They didn't play. Let me tell you something. I, I spoke about uh, Daniel how uh, in, in the beginning of the book, uh, read chapter 2, I'll give it to you as homework. But in that chapter, it talks about when, uh, when he had a dream. The king had a dream, and he wanted, he wanted somebody to interpret it. And he said, if you don't interpret this dream, whoever can interpret it, I'm going to kill you. 
And guess what? He does. He starts killing. So Nebuchadnezzar is known of a king that does what he says. So, and so imagine, he tells you, if, if you don't bow down to the statue that I made, you're going to get thrown into this furnace. So they, I mean, these three guys knew because they've seen it before. You know what I mean? And God, God's answered them before in the chapter 2. So if you remember read chapter 2, get into it, check it out. It's cool. Um, I would jump in and check it out. But so these guys, these guys were different. They stood their ground. They, they, uh, they no matter what, just because everybody was doing it, they didn't. I'm going to move this table a little bit. Sorry. Oh, caught it. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so church, so I'm here to say that you know, there's going to be times, there's going to be times that you're going to get faced in situations or trials where everybody seems to be going with the flow, but you're going to have to stand your ground. There's going to be times, church, where, where you're going to have to say no, you know what I mean? And there's, you're going to have to stand with God and you and God alone at times. Sometimes maybe in your, even your own family may be doing it and you're going to have to stand your ground. So... Your faith will get tested. These guys' faith was immovable. It was, uh, it was unshakable. You know, sometimes we think of trials. Let's, let's think of trials that we may have in our own lives, like that you're alone. So uh, in my case, drugs or anybody, maybe you at home know somebody that's addicted to drugs or alcohol or something like that. And, and, and us, and I say us drug addicts, man, because I'm there, right? So when, when you burn bridges, you burn bridges, you're alone. <laughs> nobody believes in you you know what I'm saying so maybe you know somebody or maybe even it's even you that's addicted and you've burned bridges and you're alone I mean let me tell you something God can pull you out just like these guys you everybody could be saying one thing but you could stand your ground and believe God and he will pull you out it's going to take some things to do that but he will do it so there's struggles in life that you you and other people may not believe, but God, let me tell you something, when you, when you stand on God's foundation, he'll get you out of it, just like these guys. These guys were three guys, they, they, uh, they stood their ground, they said, nope, not us, and we're going to continue to move. Uh, do what you got to do, king. In other words, do what you got to do. You know what I mean? Throw us in the furnace. Even if it takes our lives, we understand that our God's going to get us out of it. So I'm telling you guys, no matter what, we have to have that faith. We have to have that faith. So today, I'm going to give you three, one point with three sub points. And my first point is no. How many know that there's a, there's a breakthrough coming? I was talking to Pastor right now about this breakthrough song, man. You got to know that it's coming. You got to know when you know something, you have a confidence, man. You know what I'm saying? When you know something, it's like, like they can't tell you nothing else. You're on a foundation, man. I'll, I'll give you like... I'm an electrician, and I know electrical. I've been doing it for 22 years. And let me tell you, church, no matter what, if somebody comes and tells me my helpers or whoever, and they try to tell me to hook up, let's just say a panel, a 120-volt panel, 480-volt panel, whatever kind of panel it is, there's only one way to hook up a panel. If you tell me otherwise, I'm going to say no. No matter what, you can't change it because if you, if you turn it on, it's going to blow in your face. So there's only one way. you got to know how to do things. So when you know... There's confidence, man. I'm telling you guys, um, you, when you know something, uh, they can't change your mind. You know what I mean? In this case, guys, we're talking about God. I mean, mine's electrical, but in this case, these guys knew God. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you know something, I'm telling you, you're not going to, you're going to be immovable. So these guys, they knew that God was going to pull, pull them out, right? So go with me to uh, verse 16 and 17 in that same so 16 says, Shadrach, Mejak, and Abednego replied, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we're thrown into the blazing fire, the God whom we serve is able to save us. That's how you know right there. They knew already. They knew that no matter what happened, that God was going to come through. Um, so when you know something, guys, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, you're immovable. Let me tell you. Other people could be doing things, and when you know, you know. Pastor's message this Sunday, when he, uh, part of it, it said, uh, don't let it come in. Because if you remember on John 9, it was about the guy with the, the, the man that was blind with the mud, and Jesus came and rubbed mud on him, told him, go, go wash it in the pool, shalom. And he did it. And then afterwards, right, they were questioning him, left and right, left and right. 
I think they, they told him three times, like, what did you do? Who did it? Why? How? They, they brought his parents or what? And they took him here. And no matter what, this guy stood his ground because he knew. It has to be that you know God. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know what God you serve, then you're going to be lost. You know what I'm saying? I brought this message a while back, uh, I think two weeks ago, and, and I talked about decisions. This is a decision that we have to make. When you know God, when you know God, nothing's going to rattle you. You know what I mean? Nothing's going to happen, guys. So you have to have that, that decision made. And, and speak truth at the same time. I think he talked about this on Sunday, too, about speaking truth, man. No matter what, no matter what, who says what or what, I mean, it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? This guy, I mean, I mean, he knew that Jesus did it. You know what I mean? And, and it was awesome when he talked about the experience. That's awesome how the experience goes with the name. And it's really, really, man, that message was awesome. So to know God, to know God, how do you get to know God? So there's going to be three little things, and there's a lot of ways you get to know God, right? Of course, uh, your lifestyle, um, but one of them, one of them, the main one where you jump in, it's going to be giving your life to God. That's one, give. So how important is it to give your life to God? Um, for one, it's your ticket to heaven, right? And, and that, that right there, that's the prize, right? That's where we all are trying to make it is to heaven, right, guys? So, so that's one, but... Giving your life to Christ, guys, I mean, um, how can I explain it? So, so I, was think, I was driving over here. When I was driving over here, I was like, man, you give your life to Christ. When I gave my life to Christ, I felt like, you know what, like, you drive now, God. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to drive no more. I'm tired of driving. So there's a rest in your life that comes into your life. When, when, when you're trying so much and doing so much in your life and trying and trying. I remember me personally, I tried so much, I was tired. It's kind of like when you, I don't know if anybody, even you at home, if you've driven out of town and you're taking turns driving. Sometimes what we do when we go to Louisiana and when you switch drivers, man, it's a relief. You know what I'm saying? It's a relief because you don't have to drive anymore. And this is how it is with God, but with your life. You know what I'm saying? Understand that when you give your life to Christ... It's not you driving anymore. You don't have to worry so much. The power of God is in your life now. And you get to rest. You know what I'm saying? You relax and there's power in it. There, there's a surrender there. But surrendering and humbling yourself brings you up. It gives you power, guys. So let me tell you something. Like I said, giving your life to Christ, one, it, it's going to get you into heaven. But if you're tired of the way you're living and you're tired of the mess that you're in, and maybe you're not so tired. Maybe you just want to try something new. And it's going to give you rest. It's going to give you peace in your life. And you're going to live different. So that's one way, guys, that you get to know God. Um, the second one is key in our life, man. Um, his word. It's right here. You get to know him. You know, these three guys, they knew him, man. You know what I mean? You got to invest time in your reading, guys. Um, if you're not reading, try a chapter a day. Try... Anything, anything that suits you. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm a slow reader. I don't even read a chapter a day. Uh, sometimes I do on Sunday mornings, but, but really before work, I read a little bit enough so that I could chew on through the whole day and think about it and really let it sit into my life and change my life. So it, all it takes a, is a little bit, guys, so jump in. I'm telling you, reading God's word is good. Um, God's word uh, penetrates into your heart, and it reveals who you are. It's crazy because uh, when you're reading and you're reading, uh, you understand a little bit more about God. And God starts to shape your heart. He starts to come into your life and let you know what you have. And sometimes it's things you don't even know, guys, that he starts to bring out into your life that you need to address. So I'm telling you, man, read, read, read. Guys, uh, reading is key in our life, man. I've said it before so many times that it took me from one level to another, and, and it's all because I started reading little by little, man. I'll tell you how I did it. it I, I, made it a, I made it a goal in, in 2019. Well, not long ago, I made it a goal. I'm going to journal, and I'm going to read. And I started right there, and, and, and man, my, my life's changed so much. A little bit a day is all it takes, guys. In order to know somebody, and these guys knew God, in order to know somebody, if I'm going to know pastor, if I'm going to know somebody that I meet new, I need to get to know them. You need to get into this book to know him. You're not going to know him if you don't get into this book. You can do things. You can come to church, but, and you can listen, which is good. These are all good things. 
But if you don't get in this book, you're not going to know him the way you're supposed to. You know, God's word, man, and, and it's, it's, you read it in the morning. Sometimes it's for you. You take it in. But sometimes your friends or your coworkers, those people that you know, it's for them. So it's crazy how God works that, that what you read in the morning, let's just say I read a couple verses, maybe even this chapter. And later on, uh, during that same day or in the week, somebody else needs that word. If you give it to them, you're giving them power. You're giving them life. You're speaking life into them. And they, they get to see that love that how God gives it. You know what I mean? So definitely, guys, knowing God, knowing God, and I'll repeat it, knowing God, you're not going to get to know him if you don't jump in this book. You got to jump in this book to get to know him. A little bit a day is all it takes. My last uh, point, fellowship. Man, fellowship, lifting each other up sharpens, you know, it's like sharpening iron. We sharpen each other when we fellowship, guys. Let me tell you, uh, I was riding with three cowboys this past week. <laughs> I, just played. I was riding with, with, with my brothers this, this past week, and we were riding, man. And in after, you know, the fellowship is great, man. Uh, we're always lifting each other up. I mean, think about it. Y'all think about it here at church. You know, when you fellowship, we're never putting each other down, man. We're always lifting each other up. Either you learn something from somebody, or you just stay quiet and say, you know what? Man, that's awesome that, that he humbles himself. Whatever the case may be, it's always good. When we fellowship, man, me, check it out. When I first fellowship, I had the fellowship at my house. The first one when I came back and nobody was drinking, nobody was doing drugs, nobody was cussing. I, I stood back and I was watching amazed. And I have friends now that they fellowship with us. They see that. They see God's love, guys. So in this fellowship, when we're riding, riding like cowboys all weekend, right? 17 miles. Nah, I'm just playing. When we're writing, when we're writing, you know, we fellowship the whole time, lifting each other up. But afterwards, Pastor brought up a verse, and it's John 13, 35. Let's go to it real quick. I want to read it. It stuck with me, man. I, I, I meditated on that verse throughout the day, and it, man, it's so good. So, uh, so you can write it down. John 13, 35. Your love for one another will prove the world that you are my disciples. In other words, guys, so Jesus said, and, and we're talking about this, so he said, your love for one another is going to prove that you're my disciples. Not how many people that you prayed for, not how many times you came to church, not, you know, how many, how many people you invited, nothing like that. So how, you, how he's going to know, how people are going to know is how you love each other, how you fellowship with each other. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, it, it reminded so during that during that the, that afternoon after they left after the fellowship, I re, man it's it's awesome. I started to meditate just on that one verse, on my life, how I came to church, how I came to God. Mondo man, he invited me one time. I, I was it was 11 years ago. It's already been 11 years. He called me. He invited me, and and he said, you know what, church? And I said, no, I'm not I'm not too much about church, whatever, right? So I said, hey, we're gonna play ball. We're going to play ball at Division Park. I said, okay, you know what? I'll go tear it up. I'll go tear it up. We're going to go play ball. So uh, I showed up, and, you know, I was in my car. I remember, I, I hadn't really been in church. Um, I'm 30 years old. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, I'm just going to ball up with these guys. You know, I, whatever. Let's see what happens. So I get off. Everybody was balling up already. I don't, even, I don't even know who's who. So I get off. They put me in the game right away. I remember every single brother that were there, young and old. Um, now we're a little older, right? Still balling. Um, but I remember playing ball that day, and this is what I was meditating on. Uh, every time I went up, um, when they would drop me on the floor, somebody would pick me up. And it's normal. It happens on the basketball court. You see it in the NBA. Once in a while, they pick each other up. Boom, come on. But I felt more than, than usual that time because I was scoring, right? They were trying to follow me, whatever. So, so I, every time, I, I, every single time, somebody picked me up. So then somebody picked me up. Somebody picked me up. It happened like eight times. And then after the game, I kicked back, and they were all talking to each other. Little did I know, there was ten of us. Nine of them were from the church. The fellowship was awesome, man. So that right there, uh, I understood, man, there's love here. Something's going on here. You know, so I started life group, and then I came to church. So that's how my walk started. So what I'm trying to say with the fellowship is that people are watching 
God's love, when you fellowship with each other and you bring them and you fellowship with each other, it attracts people, man. It attracted me. So I understand that it attracts people, guys. So let me tell you, to get to know God, to get to know God, fellowship, of course. <clears throat> Give your life to Christ. Fellowship, reading his word. You got to get in it. You got to get into his word in order to, to know God. If, if you don't get into his word, man, it's going to be a struggle. But hey, this is what sharpens us. Today's message is short, but it's good. And if you take those things, if you take those things, apply them to your life, it's going to be good, guys. Let me tell you something. When every, everything's breaking out in your life, everything's breaking down, and, and everybody's uh, not believing in you and, and, and things like that, so you stand and, and you believe in God, you're going to know. You're going to know that you're going to get through. You're going to know that there's a breakthrough coming. You know what I mean? There's always a breakthrough that's going to come in your life when, you, when, you're, when you're seeking God, guys. So, you know, that's a short message today. Remember it. There was only one word, one, one point. It was no. Get to know God. These three guys knew God. They knew that they were going to get rescued. I'll give you some more homework. Jump it a little bit after they end up getting rescued. The, uh, the king does throw them into the furnace, and God shows up and delivers them. It says in the word that, that they come out. They come out of that furnace not even smelling like smoke. You know what I'm saying? They came out like if they didn't even go in. Why? Because they knew they were going to come out because they know God. So, guys, I encourage you, those watching at home, those here, man, if, if you struggle in any situation, know, jump in, jump in this word, know, and know that God's going to get you through it, guys. All right? So we thank you. We're going to pray for the word.